My name is Benjamin Scholl and I'm a research assistant at the Studiengemeinschaft Wort und Wissen, in English, Word and Knowledge, in the field of biology. Normally, I deal with the origin of humans. But I came across an interesting article about what the evolutionary origins of chimpanzees, gorillas, and other great apes actually look like. And that got me wondering if that what I read in 2013 in the book, in English, Evolution, a critical textbook about the complicated or unknown origins of the great apes was true at all. So I set out on a search for clues. Let me show you where this journey led me. Where do apes actually come from? The alleged pre-humans, which supposedly represent the evolutionary ancestors of humans, are present everywhere in the mass media. Much less known, however, are the massive problems evolutionary reconstructions of family trees of the apes have to struggle with. The great apes include the group of small apes, such as Gibbon or Siamong and the great apes, to which, according to evolutionary models, orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, and human are supposed to belong. An evolutionary family tree reconstruction would therefore have to show how the small apes gradually evolved from the old world monkeys. And how they then evolved step by step into orangutans and finally into African apes. Namely first the gorillas, then the chimpanzees and finally via the group of hominins, the so-called pre-humans, to modern humans. A new special paper of mine entitled, Translated, Big Mess, Unclear Ancestry in Apes and Humans, deals with the subject of an evolutionary ancestry of apes and humans. And the result is, that despite the dozens of fossil species that have been found, this evolutionary common ancestry is extremely poorly established. The continuing failure of nearly contradiction-free family tree reconstructions which could explain the origin of present-day ape species strengthens the basic type model, as we will see when we look at the data later in this video. The basic type model assumes that separately created basic types of apes and humans were made by God. Next, I would like to present briefly my arguments. There are many areas of controversy among scientists who study the fossil origins of apes and humans, although it is not even known to the public that there are problems and disagreements here. For example, the exact genetic differences between gorilla, chimpanzee and human at the level of all genetic letters are as yet unknown which casts doubt on the claim that chimpanzee and human are more closely related than either is to gorilla. Only recently, unknown areas of the human genome were decoded again. And in addition, the genetic differences between chimpanzee and human, which should allegedly be only 1-2% to difference in the genetic letters, are also massively underestimated. On the level of the letters as well as on the level of the chromosomes there is a much larger difference between chimpanzee and human than is commonly claimed. Furthermore, physical and behavioral biological characteristics clearly point out that between the African apes on the one hand, namely gorilla and chimpanzee, and human on the other hand exists an enormous gap. This has also been emphasized by earlier anatomists of world fame such as George Cuvier, Sir Richard Owen, and Thomas Huxley. Moreover, it is not at all conclusively settled whether the reconstruction of the supposed last common ancestor of ape and man should be based on apes living today, which is called the top-down approach, or on the fossil species found, what is called the bottom-up approach. With the species living today, however, it is unclear which characteristics are to be treated at all as arguments for a common descent, that is, as homologies. Alternatively, which features only mistakenly imply such a relationship, but according to evolutionary models arose, so-called homoplasies. Therefore, one does not know at all which features of today's chimpanzees a putative last common ancestor may or may not have had.
This problem of homoplasies is also found in the fossil record, which is moreover incomplete as well as fragmentary, as al Masija and colleagues have written. For a coherent evolutionary model, however, one would have to combine both approaches, top-down and bottom-up. But this, according to al Masija and colleagues, has not yet been achieved and remains at the core of the human origins problems. It is therefore not surprising when Andrew states, There is no evidence that any one of these 36 species, namely the Miocene ape fossils, was the ancestral to any of living apes or humans. Alma Sija and colleagues also write that There is no consensus on the phylogenetic position, that is, the evolutionary position, of the diverse and widely distributed Miocene apes. In addition, Pew states that Despite intensive study, many aspects of the evolutionary history of great apes and humans, hominidae, are not well understood. In particular, the phylogenetic relationships, that is, the evolutionary tree position, of many fossil taxa, that is, fossil groups, remain poorly resolved. These problems are particularly severe in phylogenetic tree reconstructions, when the features of the body skeleton and skull and dentition are studied separately. This phenomenon is also apparent in Pew's comprehensive cladistic analysis of the Miocene apes. Except for Oreopithecus bambolii and Civopithecus sibilensis, no other Miocene ape species studied would even be considered to be among the great apes, that is, orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, and human, concerning the characteristics of the body skeleton, although the dentition of 27 different fossil species of Miocene apes might suggest such a classification as great apes. We have a total contradiction here. Almasija and colleagues also note that so-called phylogenetic signals, that is, features of phylogenetic reconstruction, from the body skeleton and skull can point in different directions, and that both body regions are affected in Miocene apes. Such contradictory feature complexes are not to be expected from an evolutionary perspective and are much better interpreted within the framework of separately created basic types. Pew has created 13 different cladograms, that is, phylogenetic branching trees, from her extensive comparative data of Miocene apes. Although she examined a total of 27 different Miocene ape species, comparison of these cladograms reveals that only 3 of 27 Miocene ape species were given an overall consistent evolutionary position. Namely, three species of Hispanopithecus, Anoyopithecus, and Luthangpithecus can be placed before the split of the orangutans. In addition, Almasija and colleagues are not willing to classify the Miocene apes into a concrete evolutionary relationship at all, except for some species classified to the orangutan group and the species Nacalpithecus to the gorilla group. Since dozens of genera of Miocene apes cannot be presented in detail in this short overview, I will report only a few species here. Let's start with Oreopithecus, named like the cookie. Oreopithecus has been noted for possessing some unexpectedly human-like characteristics, although it is now not even placed in the human kin. Its classification remains uncertain. Hammond and colleagues, after reconstructing and analyzing the pelvis, emphasize above all similarities of Oreopithecus to the lesser apes, that is, gibbons. But a relationship with great apes or even with Ganon relatives is also discussed for Oreopithecus because it exhibits a so-called conflicting mix of phylogenetic signals. In many Miocene apes from Asia, especially some Civipithecines, a relationship with the orangutan is evident according to the cranial features. However, Civipithecus and Ancropithecus show skeletal adaptations which point in a completely different direction since they differ both from today's old world apes and today's apes. The genus Civipithecus contains today even the former genus Ramapithecus. Ramapithecus was considered in former times a so-called pre-human due to many characteristics. But then these features turned out to be misinterpretations, as Hartwig Scherer has demonstrated.
Pew, in turn, stated that the combination of primitive and derived, that is, advanced, features have led to ongoing uncertainty about the phylogenetic, that is, evolutionary, position of Ancropithecus and Lufangpithecus. So few fossils of Gigantopithecus, Indopithecus, and Corotpithecus are known, namely, individual teeth and jaw fragments that resolving assignment criteria are poor utility, as Pew writes. The phylogenetic positions of African apes from the early Miocene, for example, the Campo and Moratopithecus, and from the middle Miocene, such as Keniopithecus, Nacolepithecus, and Equatorius, remain very controversial, according to Almasija and colleagues. Such African species could also belong to the proconsul's kinship outside the great apes as for example Andrews and Pew Wright. Informally, large-bodied apes from the Middle Miocene in Europe are grouped together as so-called dryopithecines. It is controversial whether they are related either to the orangutan lineage or to the African apes, or if they constitute an evolutionary dead end, as Almasija and colleagues write. Yes, it is not even clear whether these species form a common ancestral community at all. Some of these species, such as Dryopithecus and Tooth finds from Germany, for example from Eppelsheim, are too sparsely represented in fossils. And others, such as Hispanopithecus, Rudopithecus, Pyrolapithecus, or even Danubius from Germany, have a mix of traits too problematic to classify to be sure what phylogenetic position these species occupied. The potential Dryopithecines Aranopithecus and Greekopithecus have been proposed as hominin candidates, that is, pre-humans, but the data do not support this thesis. There have therefore also been suggestions that they are close to the base of the African apes or more closely related to gorillas and chimpanzees, respectively. Moreover, an analysis of Pew's extensive data shows that neither Oranopithecus nor Greekopithecus are particularly close to any species living today, perhaps closest to the gorilla. Andrews, on the other hand, regards Oranopithecus and Greekopithecus as species of indeterminate assignment. Overall, therefore, according to Almasija and colleagues, conflicting views prevail about the Dryopithecines, because the fossil record is too incomplete and because it is not clear which shared features actually indicate or only appear to indicate a common ancestry, that is, the problem of homoplasy. The so-called Keniopithecines and other late Miocene apes originated from Africa. Even with respect to the group of Keniopithecines, such as Keniopithecus and Griffopithecus and potentially other species, there is no consensus on their relationships, according to Almasija and colleagues, but Pew leans toward classification them as great apes, but will not commit to at which position. In the case of the late Miocene apes called Cororapithecus, Nacolipithecus, and Sambarupithecus, the available fragmentary remains also preclude a conclusive assessment, as Almasija and colleagues write. Let us now turn to the interpretation of these fossil data from an evolutionary perspective. According to Almachia and colleagues, the position of the lesser apes and the definition of the greater apes is unknown. Therefore, the evolutionary origin cannot be clearly modeled. It is also unclear where the great apes, that is, orangutans, gorillas, and chimpanzees, come from evolutionarily. Did they perhaps descend from the Dryopithecines of Europe? Or from the Keniopithecines from Africa? One does not know. Pew, on the other hand, states that, the taxon, that is, the group, that represents the earliest known member of the hominid group, that is, the great apes, is currently unclear. Equally unclear would be the geographic aspects of such evolution, and the question of why so many features contradict corresponding phylogenetic tree reconstructions. These are homoplasies, because they do not fit into evolutionarily postulated phylogenetic trees, but only feign evolution even though they are similar in features. The origin of gorillas and chimpanzees, and the question of whether their knuckle-walking is an original trait or just a homoplasy, is therefore at least as difficult to answer in evolutionary terms as the question of the origin of humans. Almasija and colleagues wrote that, Even worse, relatively complete fossil apes, undisputedly assigned to early members of the gorilla and chimpanzee lineages remain to be found. 
Therefore, Almasija and colleagues state as a third possibility to descent from Dryopithecines or Keniopithecines, that it could be that we have not yet found the relatives of the African apes in general. Although we would actually know, better would be we suspected based on the evolutionary paradigm, that these fossils must still exist somewhere undiscovered in Africa. However, this is unlikely, since already about 40 fossil and also living genera of potential ape ancestors are known which just cannot be inserted without contradiction into a family tree. We can therefore ask, is the evolutionary development of the ancestors of humans only poorly documented? As Jean-Jacques Hublin said in the newspaper FAZ, Or did these ancestors simply never exist? The empirical data seem to speak clearly for the latter. Also the large, comprehensive characteristic analysis of puke cannot improve this picture and supplies among the Miocene apes no clear candidates as ancestors of today's living great apes, except some possible orangutan relatives. If nevertheless the impression of a clarified or at least well-justified evolution history of the apes is claimed by the mass media, this is probably not because of the empirical data. Explanations are subjective interpretations and much too far-reaching speculations caused perhaps by the researchers who want to assign the starring role to their own fossils in the evolution history. Research funds are linked to the attention created. Almasija, but also the paleontologist Beckley and others have analyzed these problems razor sharp. Another problem is that often from some, perhaps just a few human-like features in fossils, unjustified human-like behavior and locomotion patterns are simply concluded without further ado. In short, however, this is extremely problematic if first of all such features also occur in other living or fossil apes or even old world apes, and thus could also be homoplasies. Unfortunately, this is not even tested in many studies. Or, second, if such features cannot be reliably assigned to the exact biomechanical functions in species living today. And if thirdly, as in all non-human hominins and also in most Miocene apes, there are no comparative mechanisms living today, that is, species possessing a similar mix of features, from which one could then infer the consequences for locomotion. Now, to my conclusion. Study author Sergio Almasija summarizes the situation of evolutionary research on the Miocene apes very well in an interview, saying that When you look at the narrative for hominin origin, that is, the alleged fossil ancestors of humans, it's just a big mess, there is no consensus whatsoever. This interview also states that since Darwin there has been an explosion not only in the number of species in the human family tree, but also in the level of dispute concerning early human evolution. Almasija and colleagues state in their article that the evolutionary origin of the African apes remains contentious just like their geographic origin. Thus, despite great efforts, evolutionary biologists have not yet been able to present a majority-supportable evolutionary model for the putative ancestral history of today's apes and humans. Thus, the empirical findings of distinct trait mosaics can be explained much more parsimoniously in another way instead of multiple homoplasies. Diese alternative Erklärung lautet this alternative explanation is that the great apes are the result of separately created basic types. In this perspective a creator can assign trait combinations to different basic types completely freely. This eliminates all the evolutionary problems of family tree reconstruction of the origin of the apes, which we have discussed here. For me personally, for me personally, creation is a much better answer to the actual data on the origin of great apes. However, in my view, this topic is only one in a whole series of topics where I think creation models can explain the data much better than evolutionary models do. The origin of life, the verity and the complexity of living beings are described in my opinion nowhere more aptly and more beautifully than at the very beginning of the Bible. Read the creation account in Genesis 1.1 to 2.3.